I'm going to uh, read a piece uh, by uh, Alexander McLaughlin uh, entitled uh, The Arrival. McLaughlin uh, was a, uh, a kind of confederation poet, I guess, uh, rather overlooked. He's, he's written some very good work. Soon we entered in the woods or the trackless solitudes where the spruce and cedar made an interminable shade. And we picked our way along, sometimes right and sometimes wrong. For a long and weary day, thus we journeyed on our way, picked a path through a swale and swamp, and at evening fixed our camp where a cool, refreshing spring murmured like a living thing. There we laid us down to rest with the cold earth for our bed and the green bows overhead, and again at break of day started on our weary way, through morasses over bogs, wading rivers, walking logs, scrambling over fallen trees, wading pond holes to the knees, sometimes wandering from the track, then to find it turning back. Scorning ills that would betide us, stout of heart the sun to guide us. Then we came to a change of scene, groves of beech and maples green, streams that murmured through the glade, little flowers that loved the shade. Lovely birds of gorgeous dye flitted among the branches high, colored like the setting sun, but were songless, every one. No one like the linnet gray in our home so far away, no one singing like the thrush to his mate within the brush. No one like the gentle lark singing tween the light and dark. Soaring from the dewy sod like a herald up to God, some had lovely amber wings, round their necks were golden rings. Some were purple, others blue, all were lovely, strange and new. But although surpassing fair, still the song was wanting there. Then we heard the rush of pigeons flocking to those lonely regions, and anon, when all was still, paused to hear the whippoorwill, and we thought of the cuckoo, but this stranger no one knew.